Hello, I'm the political editor, Nick Robinson, and welcome to Westminster, where today we will be watching the first ever MP boxing match. I'm up in the commentary box for this fight, but we can now go ringside with James Lonsdale. James, what's it like down there? Well, Nick, they are currently doing very similar warm-ups as they try to match each other, but I can assure you that this will hot up as soon as possible. So, James, who is your favourite to win be for this fight? Well, Nick, at this point it's impossible to tell, but both of them are looking like they've got something to prove. Thanks. Don't go anywhere, people, as this match promises to be an exciting spectacle. Hello and welcome back to this EU boxing match. Big hit from Farage as he emphasises the fact that the EU is moving towards a more Brussels centralised government. This gives us less governing power. That is a very good point, but Nick Clegg's coming back, really showing the fact that UK has the largest single market, bigger than the US and Japan combined. We really benefit from this £11 trillion market. But that's a big hit from Farage, emphasising the fact that the small and medium-sized firms freed from EU regulation would mean there could be a big jobs boom. Oh, but a massive blow from Nick Clegg there. Just emphasising that the UK has 1% of the world's population and 3% of the global income. And they're finding it increasingly difficult to voice our opinion due to the EU. That's a huge, big point there. Oh, but wait. Oh, big hit from Nick Clegg to end the match. Cracking match there. But unfortunately, Farage walks away as the loser. Good night. 7.5 million jobs were created between the introduction of the single market in 1992 and 2006. The business department in the UK estimates that 3.5 million jobs in Britain are linked directly or indirectly to the UK's trade with other member states. Being part of the EU is the choosing of sides. We are stopping massive bilateral trade agreements with fast-growing export markets. China, Singapore, Brazil, India. This should be where we are focusing. What about protecting ourselves? When we are part of a large alliance of countries, our political weight is large, enabling us to speak against those who persecute the innocent. There is no way of our power would grow if we left, only weaken. That's hardly accurate. We'd still be in the UN Security Council and NATO, the largest political groups in the world. It's not as if leaving the EU would weaken our strong partnership with Washington. That argument is just plain scaremongering. Eurosceptics keep putting everything out of proportion. Businesses for New Europe's research show the contribution is nothing compared to the benefit of fewer export cases from tax and keeping EU banks in the UK. Don't forget how much the EU has invested in us. Our borders are out of control. A rise in immigration has resulted in a massive passport backlog. Not only are immigrants taking jobs that should rightfully employ UK citizens, but they're slowing down our citizens from moving freely. Being in the EU costs billions of pounds a year, just for membership. Member of European Parliament Gerard Batten says the total cost of membership is £65.7 billion a year. That's absurd. Well, Norway and Switzerland are still under EU ruling and they don't even have a say in their politics. It's better to be in the EU and have some choice over the law. It's massively in Britain's interest to remain part of the European Union. We have enjoyed an unprecedented period of peace and prosperity in Britain and most of Europe since the Second World War after the European Union was formed. Uh, most of our jobs, many of our businesses depend on our trade with our European partners and the benefits of the single market. And to leave the world's single biggest market at a time of such international instability and economic uncertainty would be clear madness.